Welcome back everybody to another one of my aviation history videos and today's going to be episode 30 in my history on the RCAF. Now in today's video we're going to be looking at 427 Squadron. From its formation in World War II as a bomber unit to today as the RCAF's only special operations squadron, 427 is one of the few units that has been in operation almost continually since its formation. But as always before we get too far into this, my name is Sean and this is Sean's Aviation. Four Two Seven Squadron was formed on November 7th of 1942 at RAF Croft as the RCAF's 8th Bomber Unit. It was part of 4 Group and was assigned the squadron code ZL and was initially equipped with the Wellington Mark III, getting their first aircraft that month. They spent some time getting comfortable with the aircraft and the art of wartime flying before first operations. On January 1st, the unit moved from six, over to 6 Group, the RCAF Bomber Group, but this was merely a paper transfer and nothing much changed for the unit. Their first operational mission took place on the night of January 15th, 16th, 1943, when six aircraft bombed Lorient, with one aircraft failing to return. In February, the unit started to convert from the Wellington Mark III to the Wellington Mark X, which had more powerful engines, and before they, could, and before they were fully converted, the unit converted once again to the Halifax Mark V. The change in aircraft coincided with a move of bases, and the unit relocated to Leeming on May 5th. The unit flew their first operational mission with the Halifax on May 29th, 30th, when 12 aircraft bombed Wuppertal, Germany. All aircraft returned safely, although one had to divert due to battle damage. In January of 1944, the unit converted to the Halifax Mark III, the only difference being engines and a modified wingtip design. On June 6th, D-Day, the unit was tasked with bombing targets in and around Camp Noir, France, just east of the landing beaches. It was a maximum effort mission, and 18 aircraft were dispatched with all aircraft returning safely to base. The unit continued to bomb Germany and German-occupied Europe, as well as the odd mine-laying or dinghy search mission thrown in throughout the rest of 1944 into 1945. In March of 1945, the unit converted to the Lancaster, flying a mix of Mark I's and Mark III's, the only difference being the engines, Mark I's with Rolls-Royce and Mark III with the Packard Merlins. The first operational mission with the Lancaster took place on March 11th, when 14 aircraft were tasked with bombing Essen, this also being a day mission. These day missions became more and more common as the war moved on as the Allies gained air superiority over the continent. The unit flew their last operational bombing mission on April 25th of 1945 with a bombing mission on gun emplacements off the coast of Germany. The unit was not disbanded, however, and remained at Leeming, flying POWs and troops back to England from Italy. These missions were invaluable to the troops involved, but little remembered today. The unit officially stood down on June 1st of 1946. During World War II, the unit flew 3,328 sorties, amassing 18,512 operational hours. It dropped 10,294 tons of bombs, plus an unknown number of mines. They were credited with 10 enemy aircraft destroyed, 1 probable, and 10 damaged. It suffered 90 aircraft lost, was 35 killed, 477 missing and presumed dead, 10 POWs, 11 evading capture, and 10 injured. There is no record of the number of troops and POWs the unit returned home after the war. The post-war life of 427 started on August 1st of 1952 when it was reformed at St. Hubert as a fighter unit flying Sabres. It was assigned the squadron code BB and received their first aircraft, Sabre Mark IIs, in September. The unit was selected as one to head overseas as part of the RCAF commitment to NATO, and on March 7th of 1953, the unit headed overseas as part of Operation Leapfrog 3. You'll find a link above to my video covering Operation Leapfrog. The unit was part of number 3 Fighter Wing and was based at Zweibrücken, a location that was bombed by 427 just 8 years earlier. All the unit was on site by April 6th. The unit's time at Zweibrücken was marked with numerous training missions as well as an exchange with other units and countries to help strengthen the connection between NATO allies. May of 1953 brought an upgrade to the newer Sabre Mark V, and in September of 1955, an upgrade to the Mark VI was completed. June 16, 1962 saw the unit move to Grosse-de-Quin, France, but not for long, as on December 15th, the unit was stood down when the Sabres were retired from use. 
This did not last long, as the very next day, December 16th, the unit was stood back up as a strike fighter unit and received the CF-104 in mid-January of 1963, the first RCAF unit to be equipped with this type. This also brought on some difficulties, as the unit had to develop many of the techniques required to fly this demanding aircraft. The unit continued to fly the CF-104 while based in Europe, and they integrated into the CAF in February of 1968. In June of 1969, the unit relocated to Four Wing at Baden Solingen when the base at Zweibrücken was closed. On July 1, 1970, the unit was stood down from operations. The unit had won numerous awards and trophies during the CF-104 years, including the Air Division Trophy in 1965, the Bradshaw Trophy in 1966, and the Top Gun Competition in 1967 and 1970. On January 1st of 1971, 427 was reactivated as a tactical helicopter unit at CFB Petawawa, flying both the CH-135 Twin Huey and CH-136 Kiowa. They were used in battlefield reconnaissance, aeromedical evacuation, and artillery spotting. In 1996, the unit began to convert to the CH-146 Griffin, and the Kiowas and Hueys were gone by 1997. With the introduction of the Griffin, the unit took on the role of special operations support and a dedicated set of crews who trained to work with JTF-2. Throughout the 1990s and into the 2000s, the unit supported many missions around Canada and the world, including the Ice Storm in Ontario and Hurricane Mitch in Honduras. In 2005, it was decided that 427 would transition to a full-time special operations unit while remaining based at Petawawa. Not too long after, 427 Squadron was deployed to Afghanistan to help support the coalition mission there. Due to some limitations of the CH-146, the unit also flew leased MI-17 helicopters on operations there, something wholly unique within the RCAF. Today, 427 Squadron continues to fly the Griffin in special operations support missions for the Canadian Forces, and specifically with JTF-2. Now, a lot of their missions are more or less classified and kept out of the public eye, but they are, have been known to have been deployed to both Afghanistan and Iraq at various times. The aircraft themselves are also known to have been flown in quasi-civilian schemes, kind of a military-esque civilian scheme, and they've carried civilian registrations that I know for a fact by looking them up. Some of them are actually false registrations that are registered to a dummy company. Now going forward, um, we are looking at the replacement of the Griffin in the next, I believe it's a decade or so. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of airframe they eventually, excuse me, what kind of airframe they eventually adopt. If they're going to go with the same aircraft as other units or go with a specific special operations um, airframe that is unknown. We're also seeing the addition of some uh, IST King Airs moving into the RCAF. They're supposed to be based in Trenton. Not sure if they're going to be rolled into 427 Squadron or assigned their own kind of unit. And as well, there is talk of adding surveillance drone capability to the RCAF. And I've heard the Predator is at the top of the list. And again, I don't know if that's going to be included into the Special Operations Flight Envelope with the 427 Squadron or if there will be another numbered unit stood up to fulfill those roles. Either way, I don't see 427 going anywhere anytime soon. And uh, they'll continue to serve, uh, serve the Canadian Forces with distinction in the next coming years. On that note, thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time.